everyone, welcome back to our real-time journal as we build our DIY off-grid home. Some of our episodes are more or less detail-oriented. We've had several people express interest in the rocket mass heater, which means that we're going to do a few episodes with quite a lot of build detail. Winter is well on its way. It's knocking on our door. Um, and so we're just getting around to uh, putting in our heat source into our house. We've decided to do a rocket mass heater. Um, it's something I've been interested in for quite a long time. It seems like a really efficient way to, uh, to burn wood. Wood is our fuel of choice out here um, because it's everywhere. Uh, but I really don't want to bring in, you know, six, eight cords of wood every year. Rocket mass heaters are kind of trendy right now. There's kind of a thing for rocket mass heaters. I guess you could say that there's a thing for homesteading and a lot of homesteaders heat with wood. A lot of homesteaders have encountered the issue of efficiency with wood heat. The rocket mass heater, it, uh, it burns wood completely and efficiently, so um, there's very little smoke, if any, um, and then it cycles the, uh, all of the exhaust, the, the hot air, through a thermal mass, which acts as a thermal battery. Uh, so you, you charge it up, you get it hot, and it stays hot for a long time, even long after the fire goes out. It allows you to heat with much less wood, which is more sustainable and requires less effort and is all the things that people want. So there's no wonder that it's really a popular and interesting idea to a lot of people. So that's ideal for us. There will be points of our day where we can sit there and pay attention to a fire and then um, and let it go out and then go and do other things, but we still have warmth throughout the house um, and it's a small space it's a really good candidate for a rocket mass heater because um, uh, we have no real insulated walls between our different spaces it's all open plan so um, that's what we've decided to go with and we're just now in the design phase of it um, but very quickly uh, going into implementation. There's a lot of resources out there online um, for looking at rocket mass heaters. Uh, I bought this book. I actually contributed to their Kickstarter so that I would get the book. Um, I think now it's just available out there in the world. Um, uh, this is the Rocket Mass Heater Builder's Guide by Ernie and Erica Wisner. They've done the homework and they lay it out really nicely in this book. I appreciate instructions that are complete and uh, and worded well so I find it really easy to follow um, also the other place to go uh, if you're looking for rocket mass heater info is permies.com uh, Paul Wheaton over at, uh, at permies um, has really uh, dumped a lot of energy into um, uh, figuring it out and experimenting a lot with rocket mass heaters and has really done a lot of work to get Ernie and Erica's work out so that people can see it. Um, so check it out, permies.com. They talk about it. Um, they talk about all sorts of awesome stuff. Paul Wheaton at permies.com also has various video format instructional resources for building rocket mass heaters. If you don't like to learn from a book or if you want a supplement to the book, there are a, a few different um, videos which give you a lot of detailed information, instructional information for how to go about building your own. And I will place some of those links below.
So I started by stacking the stacking the combustion unit, which is a brick structure. It's a J-tube design, so wood goes in, burns horizontally, and then up a long uh, insulated chimney, which is inside of a steel barrel. So that gives you your, your radiant heat like you would normally get off of a wood stove. Uh, but then it's, that exhaust is cycled through ducting through your thermal mass. But I started by stacking that, those bricks and getting an idea of that size. And I did it on a piece of plywood and then made sort of a full-size template of that so that I didn't have to move around several hundred pounds of bricks in order to figure out where I wanted the thing. I then had a full-size template. I could shift it around, figure out, you know, keep my clearances away from combustibles and clearances, you know, away from my staircase and other things and um, pretty quickly uh, know where everything else had to go. One thing you may think as you see us designing our rocket mass heater for this small home, not a tiny home, but this small home, you'll notice it's a big thing. It's a big thing that's taking up a lot of real estate. Well, we knew that was going to be the case. Our kids probably will be disappointed when they find out that we aren't going to have a couch after all. We have a rocket mass heater instead of a couch. But we've planned for that and that's actually one of the things that contributes to the efficiency of a rocket mass heater in that it can heat people instead of just heating the air because it is a thing you can sit on. So just the same way that the cat curls up on the hearth, you know, curls up on the tiles right in front of the fire, we human beings can curl up on the, or stretch out on the rocket mass heater, uh, on the, the couch bench kind of, it's not really a soft couch, but on the bench of the rocket mass heater and be warmed by contact, which is the most efficient way to keep people warm. And then I started laying out my, um, my ducting runs. These are all just roughed in. Uh, I haven't cut any tubes yet because I didn't want to commit. Um, but we're actually, we're, we're doing a double back or a triple back, I guess. We go out that way, come back this way through another bench, and then this way it's gonna actually hop up over the bench and become a back to our heated bench and then go, uh, our chimney is going to go this side of center on this wall. So um, it's rec they recommend, you know, 20-ish feet of ducting, and we have just over 20 feet. Um, and quite a few turns, but uh, it, it should work out. I, th I think I'm following their instructions well. Um, uh, so now that I know roughly where I want my chimney, um, I'm good to go to put the chimney box in and then I can work back from there. Uh, so the first thing I have to do is put the chimney in. So it's a standard chimney box, you know, support box, um, double wall insulated pipe above, and a single wall stove pipe coming down from that. And then the whole, um, the, the ducting of the mass heater will then uh, line up with that. But, you know, you got to let your framing dictate where that where that chimney box can go. So that's what we start with. In our mock-up you saw one steel barrel, but in fact the design requires two matching steel barrels. So one thing we had to do this week was track down another steel barrel. We're lucky to have great neighbors who trade with us and um, we were able to find this barrel for basically in return for the job of emptying it. <laughs> It's Y2K food. This food was purchased before the year 2000, dry goods, and hasn't been in the barrel the whole time. So let's see how it lasted. That got held up pretty well. Like the guy who likes it. Cheesy doodles are immortal. Food for the chickens too. Come on back next week and uh, you'll see some of the materials getting applied and uh, see what the construction actually looks like. I'm Nick Fouch. Thanks for watching. What you got, baby? Mud ball. You got a mud ball?
do it. <laughs> <laughs>